right, there we go. Hey everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another great day of FileMaker training at fmtraining.tv. I'm the creator of fmtraining.tv where you can learn all about the FileMaker platform and learn how to build better FileMaker applications for you, your customers, your organization. This broadcast is completely free to everyone and is being broadcast in high definition to Discord, YouTube, and to Twitch. This broadcast is being recorded, which is really great. Of course, we might clean up the recording a little bit. So if we make a malfunction during the live stream, then of course we reserve the right to clean that up on the recording later on. However, because it's a live broadcast, we encourage you to ask questions. In fact, some people get aggravated when there's this dialogue with you and we ask questions. I, I, we want questions. If you have a question, odds are other people have the question too. And so I want to thank everyone for logging in, Ken and TK and Dave, Dave One, Dave Learning, uh, Ed, uh, Elzo, uh, Carol, Jake, Mike, all of you, welcome once again to another great broadcast. Now, as a reminder, if you want to check out the upcoming broadcast, go to fmtraining.tv, press the left tab for the live button. You can see the upcoming broadcast schedule. That's pretty awesome. Additionally, if you want to help support this channel, right? We always say this, uh, this broadcast is brought to you by fmtraining.tv, bringing you the greatest and the most entertaining FileMaker training videos available. So the idea is that if you want to help support the channel, make sure you check out our on-demand video bundles. We have videos that cover the latest version of FileMaker. We have videos that cover the deploy course. In fact, we used to sell the courses individually anymore. It's just much simpler to sell a complete bundle for a low price. We do this on an annual basis. So if you buy one of the bundles, that really helps support the channel. It ensures that we can keep coming back every day because this broadcast actually takes a lot of money to run. The people here don't work for free. As much as I would love that to be the case, they uh, they do want to get paid. But welcome to day two of Nick's uh, broadcasting uh, efforts here. Um, and I want to welcome everyone to another great day. So Nick, go. Okay, okay, I'm thinking. <laughs> Okay, so let's um, uh, start to drive the, the rocky boat. Um, okay, so today is the day two of uh, how to use um, uh, slide control and ta and uh, slide control and button bars together, and then uh, this assembly uh, the those two objects together, and then you build a new tab. So what the goal on this is because. Uh, as I, I keep repeating this uh, because it is important. Uh, Farmaker has out of the box tools. Okay. Uh, you can find them in a tool in a toolbar on top of the of the of the screen when you are in the layout mode. Right? So those are tools that you can uh, use as is. Okay, and then you can build your own tool with making assemblies and stuff like that. Don't believe this is a Nick Hunter stuff. No, it's not. Okay, this is how FarMaker uh, wanted to address the problem. I remember we uh, my, during my time over there, we had a, a lot of conversation how to do things. Um, do we need uh, do we need an object where you can customize everything in the object with a UI? The, you know, like the like the tab control, for example. No, we don't want that because always, always you will need something that the control that they you know the, the control that where you customize the thing won't won't have you know you will need something that is not there okay always it's always the case so they try multiple mockups and uh, they are they are asking 200 people to try it and 200 people said something was missing okay something different 200 different things missing all the time right so that means that wasn't the great that was the good approach. The good approach was to build kind of a universal objects, okay? Things that you can transform and you can model and you can um, um, mix together. And then you, you have a new assembly together and then you have a new object out of, out of this, right? And that's the reason why, so in that case, uh, if, if I was wrong, let's say I'm wrong, I'm saying, Nick, you're wrong, this is not the case, it's one of your hack, okay? I would say, okay, why a farmaker will have a, a 
created the trigger on panel switch, for example. See, uh, let me show you here. So uh, FireMaker came with, uh, with this object here, with this um, trigger uh, on panel switch here, right? So if, if, if it was, if, um, what's the name? Um, the fact that, uh, uh, I mean, FireMaker came with that, uh, ob that, that function on panel switch for one reason. So uh, why FireMaker came also, why, Fi why FireMaker came with, um, I'm local, huh? it's incredible, uh, came with this get trigger uh, current panel and get trigger target panel, right? There's a reason why they did that, okay? So they, 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 gave, they give you all those blocks, all those bidding blocks for you to assemble them in a way and then you get a new object. So that is what we're going to do today, okay? So um, I, I just wanted to show you why uh, Pharmaco is doing this. So today we are going to use, so yesterday, uh, just a, a little, uh, um, um, you know, um, uh, remember, remember about what we did last uh, yesterday. Uh, so we yesterday we had those buttons here, and all each buttons are going to an object. Well, slide one, slide two, slide three. Okay, so that's what we were we we were doing yesterday. We had slide one, slide two, slide three. We had a button here, but those are regular buttons. So today we are going to learn how to use um, button bars instead of using buttons like this. Okay because this is very complicated to use uh, if you want to have a visual feedback like you can have with the tab. Pretty much what we want to do, we want to replicate this feedback here, right? So the, the same feedback that you have on the tab here, uh, you know, when you go here, see this feedback, this is active tab, those are inactive tab, this is active, this is active. See, you have a visual feedback here. We want to replicate this. So pretty much what we want to do, we want to, to, we want to physically connect together two distinct objects, okay? So how we do that? So let me duplicate this and uh, open this, okay? Okay, so. The, 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 the now what we we want to re, we want to change this with button with button bar. So let me uh, remove all of this and let's keep this. Okay. So now I want to explain you how button bar works. Okay. So this is very important. A button bar is a special object. We and this object is combining multiple buttons together. You can see by default. When you draw a button bar from from the from the toolbox here, um, uh, it draws three buttons. So you get three buttons: button one, two, and three. And they are empty. There's no names. There's no icon and stuff like that. So here we have three buttons here. That's exactly what we want to do. Let's say I want I have slide one, okay, and here I have slide two, and here I have slide four, slide three. Sorry. So now I have a way to distinct each of them, okay? So the bottom bar here, it's a combination of multiple objects. So let me show you the, let me show you the objects. First of all, you have the bottom bar itself. The bottom bar itself, it's an object by itself, okay? So you can have a, bo you can have a, what's the name? Uh, a border, you can have whatever you want, okay? With the bottom bar here, you can have a, uh, a border here, but you cannot have a feeling, a feel. You cannot feel it. You can have, you can have multiple things, but there's multiple things that are deactivated because this is only one object. Okay. So let's say we don't want this. Then inside you have what we call a divider. What's a divider? A divider is a solid line that you draw like this. This is a divider. The divider is this. Okay. So you can have a, a what's the name? You can have a thick divider if you want. Sorry. Uh, you go there, you, you can have a, a thick di divider, see, or less thick divider, whatever, or no divider whatsoever, okay? So this is where, this is how you, this is how you, you design your own object, depending on what you want to do, okay? So this is it. So, and then you have a segment, okay? So a segment is a piece, is a button. Pretty much what we call segment is this, see? It's a button, you have the bar, 
then you have the divider okay it's a separation between between segment and then you have segment itself okay segment and then you have the icon inside because the 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 big difference between this this object here uh the the tab control that here between this, uh, oh, I removed it. Okay. Uh, before, be, between the tab, the regular tab control, this tab control here, uh, here, the the advantage here, this tab control here, you cannot add, you cannot add a, 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 an icon on the button. Okay, you can't. Okay. So with this object here, you can add an icon here, which is cool. Uh, it has its uh, its function. Let's say this, and you put this, and then you put this, whatever, you know. Uh, you put whatever icon you want per, uh, you know, and then here with this you can change the color of the icon. Okay, so you have multiple object inside, multiple uh, kind of um, object inside one object. So you have the the object the button by itself, the divider, the segment, and the icon. All of those are customable in terms of uh, visual. Okay, so here we have a lot of controls. Okay. So now that we have this, uh, the bottom bar has a, a very specific kind of a state. We call that active state. Okay. So the, the what can be active? A segment can be active, inactive, hover, press, and in focus. Okay. So you have those five states. If you select bar, for example, you have normal only. If you select divider, you have normal only. If you select segments, you have active, inactive, over, etc. And if you select icon, you also have active, inactive. So that means you can decide how your bar is looking like when you want to create the bar, the, this here. Now, there is a question yeah. from Bilbo. Um, yeah, we'll have to chase it down before, before tomorrow. Bilbo, he says, is there a way to hide the divider when you hide one of the buttons? Question mark. Uh, yes, the, the, if you, no, 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 you can. Okay, uh, yeah, no, I know, I know what you want to do. Let's. I'm going to go there or later. Uh, yeah, no, you cannot hide the divider. The divider is an object by itself. You know, it's something. It's something there. Now, if you let's say you have a divider, okay, uh, and uh, let's say you put a divider, a red divider, okay, and you hide these objects, for example, because yeah, you know, you hide this object here. The, the the divider is hidden by 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 default. I mean, the divider goes away. You know, um, so one of the divider goes away because one of the segment goes away. But you cannot hide the divider itself. You know, you are, you the divider here goes away because I hide either that object or that object. Okay, so. One of those those two objects share the same divider. So either this object, this segment, or this segment disappear is hidden. Then the 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 what's the name? The divider goes away, and you have only the divider between this and this. But you cannot hide the divider. But there's another way to do that, and I'm going to show you that. Okay. So um, so let's go back and remove this. Okay. So now, uh, so we have the states. We have active state and inactive state. This is the two state that we are interested in. Okay. Let's say I want uh, the active, the inactive state to be what it is, and I want the active state C to be red, right, and um, and uh, white text. Okay. This is the default. But in my in in the C, you have two different states. You have the inactive and active. So if I'm showing this and I'm making this active, okay, let's say I'm making the, the slide number two active, okay? So here how it looks. Oh, sorry, I need to remove this. This is how it looks, okay? So you have the slide two active, this one is inactive and this was inactive. If I changed, I say, oh, I want this one to be active, right? By default, active segment by default, this one now become active, okay? Okay, so, but now what I want, I want to have kind of for, you know, I have two objects here, uh, sorry. I want the tab control to look like, you know, the white here, see? You remember the, the white stuff that we I wanted to do, okay? 
So first of all, so now I want this to be white when it's active, okay? So I'm going to segment here and I say, okay, when it's active, I want the background to be white. I want the text to be black. And I want the icon, when active, I want the icon to be red, okay? I want something like that when it's active. So see, pretty much now, it looks like this now when it's active. So we are much closer to to look to see to to have something that looks like our what's the name um, a tab control. Okay. So now I want uh, the button bar. Okay. Uh, I want the button bar to have a border. Okay. So I want the button bar to have a a green a gray border. See. Now it looks like even much more. Okay like a tab control. Because what I've done here, I have surrounded this with a border without the, the, the bottom. I don't want the bottom here. Now you can see you have a separation here that I, sh I don't want the separation here. See, I don't want the separation because I want that to be merged, the white and the white to be merged, but I want to keep the separation here between this, this tab here that is this one is inactive, so I want that to be uh, still there. But w when it's active, I want that to disappear. So what we need to do here, you need to do this. So this object here, see, you have two objects, you know? You have two objects. You need, we need to remove the top, the top border from here. So now it looks like this. Ah, uh -huh. so we're much closer to have something that we like. It looks much more like but still is missing pieces, okay? So now that I've done that, uh, so I've, I've removed the, the top, the top uh, um, control here, the panel here, the top here. Now what I want to do, okay? I want to have here a transparent, when, when is inactive, I want, I want the border button when this is inactive, one point gray okay so when it's inactive i want this okay uh sorry i did a mistake here uh, i did this okay hold on when it's active nothing okay so see here now it looks better it looks even it looks more like our uh, uh what's the name it look more like a, a tab control now right but now what is missing is just a, a, a divider so i want a divider to be this color. And now, I have my tab control, okay? So it looks exactly like it should look like. But there's something you need to learn here. If I keep the thing that way, that means I have here a bottom, I have a, a one pixel, uh, one point, bottom border here, bottom line on the bottom, okay, here, I have one point here, one is inactive. And when it's active, I have nothing. I have no border. That will make this text to, to, to dance one pixel up and one pixel down when you act, when you click, 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 it will, it will move one pixel. So what you do, when it's, when it's active, you still need to say, I want one bottom border transparent then here I have one border transparent but still it will count that as something even though it is transparent and then when it's inactive I have one still but here I'm showing a color so now I won't have the bouncing kind of for the bouncing effects uh, no it's not transparent it's uh, I need to be white sorry uh, here I need an active and it needs to be white Otherwise, it, it will it will show. Okay. So that it doesn't show. So I have a white border here, and here I have a gray border here on the bottom. Okay. So now that I've built, so you can see now, I have built my object here. It's built. Okay. So what I suggest you to do when you do that, you know, I suggest you to save this state, this object uh, style. So you have everything, uh, everything you know, the hover state, the press, and the focus, everything there, everything okay, everything looks good. What you do, you save as a new style, right? And you say, okay, this is Nick's uh, tab control. 
okay? And so you have a new style next tab control, right? And you can even save this. The, the, so that means if you destroy this and you build a new one like this, okay, you just need to say slide one. You just need to, to give the name here again, slide two and slide three uh, to give the title of the thing. Uh, put back your icon. Uh, the icon you want here, you say, okay, I want that icon here, I want that icon here, and I want that icon here. Uh, not Twitter, we don't care. Um, so I have this, and then now you just have to say, I want my uh, next tab control, and bam, you have it, it's there. Uh, you have your tab control, you put it back the way it is, like this, right? And you can make it up and down like this, and, and then you have, you have your tab control back, okay? So, um, and you can say this one active and stuff like that. So now, so now we learn about, uh, so now see, it looks like a, top, a button bar. Uh, it looks like a, a tab control. Now, the advantage of this design here, um, um, it's that you can have the slide, this, when you double click here, you can show that vertically or horizontally, which is impossible to do with that one. Okay, this one is horizontal only. This one with that system here, it can be vertical. Yeah. Yep. So, we'll, yep. 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 So, so we, you will tell me, okay, what the benefits of this is this? Yeah, you can. So you can have a, you can have thirteen yeah. kind of blocks like this, right? And they still look good. Okay. So if you want, if you so if you have a lot of bars like this. Right, uh, uh, vertical is better than horizontal. Horizontal, the thing will have looked like this. It'll be like right off the screen. That yeah. mean, yeah, is off the script, the screen. So you have to do like this, something like. Uh, sorry. Okay, we do have a question here, and uh, so John Haggerty asked the question, and Net Lobster, she wanted to make sure we didn't eject on it. So, here is the question: What is the difference between active and in focus? Okay. This is more a theme question, but uh, I'm gonna answer this. Okay. Uh, active states is something you can act on. You have an action on. Uh, in focus, it's it's a style. Active, inactive, it's also a style, but also is something I can decide who is active, who is not, which you cannot do that with in focus. This here. It's the style of something. So in focus means this. Let me show. Uh, when mean, they kind of seem like they're the same thing, Nick. Right? I mean, no, from, it's from, not. A, no, well, it's not. Well, from a layman's perspective, right? No, this like... is active. This is active. Okay, but is it okay. also in focus too? No, it's not in focus. Uh, I can I can show you. Let's say I'm doing this. I'm doing I'm doing the in focus stuff, and in focus I'm saying I want solid color. Uh, blue and I want the text green okay and I want the icon green okay this is uh, this is in focus okay so now I need to put a, a, a script somewhere here okay I need to put something that is doing something so let's say bit okay but it will be this one 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 two uh, let me put a button here Beep. Okay. So uh, this is active, and yeah, but this is in focus stuff. It's um, in focus. I don't have the focus here. The focus would be if I do this tab order. Oh, you tab to it. It would be uh, yeah, in yeah, focus. Yeah objects and yeah so I need to but if you click on something doesn't it mean it's in focus and no, it's active no, no. See, see here I'm in focus because you're tabbing I'm tabbing and then arrow up arrow down and so it's high so basically it's like you tab to it and it's highlighted it means it's in yeah, focus but, it, but still this one active oh that's true isn't it uh... okay. so look you know what we do okay time yeah, but... for this all right. Time for the buzzer. Uh, we need we need a uh, we need a 
uh, two, two, even three days on three even a week. days on, on week. You think on what? styles on this? Oh my God! Okay, okay. so uh, uh, we need Rick, other Rick, Rick. we need other people to vote on this because Rick, 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 and people, people, and people. Do you know why we don't have any theme here? Why we don't have any theme here anymore? You know why? Uh, why Farmaker didn't come with uh, tons of new, new themes, super elaborated and stuff like that? Why? Because the three guys that knew how this was working left the company, and I'm one of those three. <laughs> so they have no clue how to do this. Okay. <laughs> so, and it's true. Oh, look, for example, did you know? For example. Uh, uh, just a sneak peek about this topic. It, it's a great topic. I love this topic because this is. Uh, but for example, this is a header, and I let's say I am in the I am in the enlightenment because some of them have this uh, feature. You see here, you have a style, and you have, let's say, I have a text style. You see, you have uh, when you have a style here. Sorry, when you have a text style here, uh, you have dots here. Dot 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 dot. dot okay, and those are those don't have dots. But those are dots. Why is because look this. If you initiate the text in this part a uh, header, mm -hmm. it looks like this. Okay. When you initiate the text here, it looks like this. And when you initiate the text here, right? It looks like this. This is black. This is gray. This is white. Why? Because this is a header text. This is a default. And this is a footer text. So you have, and the same for leading grand summaries, you know, leading sub, you know, one, two, uh, addition. So they were experimenting with enlightenment. They were experimenting something like that. When you initiate an object, Depending on which part you are in, it'll change, it changed the look. Unfortunately, we cannot replicate that on custom theme. That, like me, for example, my theme, my theme, Red Downtown, I can't put dots objects like this. I can't create an object that is tied to an, uh, to a parts, right? So there's many things nobody knows about what are going on there. And I could, I could, I could do a great, great session on theme and the, how to manipulate this stuff and stuff like that. And the focus well, would, and would the you, over, would, would you cover uh, custom, what custom themes and shared styles? Would you cover that? Yeah. The shared yes. Styles? Cause that's, the, that's a performance thing. That's a lean design thing. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So we need a, okay. So we, uh, yes. Uh, Okay, so there's a conversation that's going about some other stuff. Uh, so anyone wants to see uh, themes and styles and, um, you know, uh, unnatural uh, uh, things you can do with themes and styles? How many, like three days? I don't know if we want to give it a whole week. I might have to vomit. That's a lot of custom themes and shared styles in yeah. a week. Anyone? I mean, I mean yeah. We, I mean, we need you know votes. What? We need votes on that. We're going to need some votes yeah, yeah. on that. I can do very, very deep. I can start slowly and then going deep on Fridays, mm -hmm. like I did for the UI design. But, you know, whatever. You can call that design because you can put that in the UI UX design because this is uh, knowing how the theme works and how the style works and stuff like that. That helps you making very sleek and nice object that looks great and, uh, you know, and I can, you know, for example, you you know, you saw you saw me put the D A D A D A here because D A D A D A D A that the gray color for the border, the universal color border, Apple use, Famicom use, uh, Windows use, everybody use is D A D A D A. I can come with plenty of tips like that during that week. So I, uh, I would say Aaron P. Has anyone had an issue with using a button bar as a navigation menu? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to well uh, button bar. Uh, wait, wait, button bar navy. That's the thing that Christian did, isn't that what Christian did with the add-on? He did an add-on with that. He drag and drop yeah, the add-on. Okay, yeah. The add-on Christian what did is he used. It's not a button bar. He used their uh, portals and uh, it's much more elaborated than that. But I'm going to cover that if you want, uh, because I still have some uh, some time because that's halfway. It's 2 p.m. But it's halfway for me. I, I started. We started at 1:26. Okay, well, yeah, if you want to cover it now. I, it's I mean, Ar I mean, Aaron P. Uh, uh, so, Moki says, I'm still waiting for importing instead of duplicating. 
In reference to what, Moki? I'm, I'm taking you out of context. You're waiting from Claris or for us? No, no, for us. Yeah, I know what he's talking about. He's using uh, the import, uh, um, using the usage of the import uh, script step instead of for duplication, replication, and uh, for many, many uh, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So let me finish this a uh, little bit here. Uh, I want to, I want to cover this. So, so, so you saw the style, but this, all the style stuff. This is more style. It's not a button bar yeah. issue. This is valid for anything. Okay, uh, the, this unfocus and stuff like that. Oh. So active inactive. Now you know. You decide. You decide who is active, and and you can even decide who is active by calculation, which is what we are going to use uh, later. Okay. So, but I want to continue to explore the button bar here. Big advantage of the button bar, and I know many of you doesn't even know that. Uh, when the, the the bar here, this this tab here, if you want to move a tab around, if you want to move the tab here, you want to move this tab to another location. You know, you move, you want to move this one as a, at the end. You need to open this and you need to do this. Okay, this is what you need to do. Uh, here, you don't need that. Uh, you want to move slide as, at the third position. You select, you you click and hold, and then, okay, hold on. You click and hold, and oh, you click and yeah. Huh. I, I, this does it to me. I was I was waiting for you to choke on this because this it, it, it's yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened. It'll here. work. Uh, it'll work. You have to click and hold and wait longer. Just click and hold and wait longer. Or no, it's it's normally you shouldn't wait so so uh, long. For me, it's always okay. there. You go see. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they, yeah, they 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 uh, they uh, increase the time of, uh, you know, yeah, they need to work on this. It, it got it got worse. No, I know what happened here. Uh, you need something solid to move it. You know, it's it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it, okay. It's a great thing, so you can do it. Okay, you, you work on this. Okay, uh, but I want to show you that that is possible to move something here and to move around. It's yeah, you're right. It's a nightmare. It got worse. It got worse. Uh, so you need to wait. You demo certain things and like whatever. Like if you're a car salesman and you're demoing a car, there's always yeah. like that one feature of the car that sucks, right? And yeah. they can't figure out what they were thinking. And so whenever you demo it, you don't demo that thing. This is one of the things you don't demo because you can't reliably get it to always work. Okay, See that? never mind. Yeah, yeah so never but mind. anyway, you can do it. You can, yeah, I partially understand, but I need to show that because it's important. Uh, it's important. You don't want to, you don't want to redesign your entire stuff just because you want to move a segment, right? I mean, uh, but definitely a farmer can need to work on this. Um, so you can, okay, you can move around things. Also, you can select this, you can select the segment you want, okay, and delete them, okay? So that's what you can do, which is which is cool. Okay, it's a nice stuff to do. So let's put that back horizontal. Okay, and so see you have much more control on this, and then you can do this and this, and then you can do this. Uh, thing thing up, and uh, you put this here. Okay, so now you have a tab back. Okay, okay. So now what I want to show you is how you connect those two together. Okay, so that will take uh, 15 minutes. Okay. So, how to connect those two? We learn we learn that you can uh, decide who is active. This will be active permanently. That means if you said uh, if you say um, this one is active, it will be always showing this one active, even though you click another on another one. Okay. That will be the active segment, the default active segment. But here now we need to we need to connect that with a calculation. So how you do that? Okay. We need at some point we need to know where we are. Okay. For many reasons, and I don't I, I don't want to explain that now because I'm going to have a kind of a, 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 a session for that on get layout object attributes. We cannot rely on this on get object layout attribute because the get object layout attribute targets it targets a name an, an object a specific object by name and it cannot uh, target a specific object calculated and the name to be calculated okay so we cannot rely on this so forget about the get layout object attributes to to know 
to decide which this one needs to be active based on which one, which of the segment is showing. Okay, we cannot rely on this one. But we have a better way to do it is to use the on panel switch, right? And to use a trigger. So what is the script doing? Each time, each time, um, each time that I am, uh, what's the name, uh, navigating, is set a global variable that I call the current navigation new tabs. So this is the, the, the layout I'm here, okay? This global variable, okay, uh, will tell me which one uh, so I get the value, the, the trigger panel. I, I want to know where I'm going, okay? The target panel, where I'm going, and I get the number of where I'm going, okay? So I'm going, this one will set the number of the of the panel I'm going. And then I refresh an object. Uh, I refresh this object here. I refresh this object. I refresh the tab, the navigation bar. I call that the navigation bar, okay? So this is what the script is doing is on panel switch. Each time I switch the panel, I have this coming up. So now you see that I have I have a, a global variable here. Okay. Okay. So each time I'm changing this, let's say I have the I have the navigation dots here. And I move this. It does on panel switch, see? It shows me where I'm going. See here it says, panel two, this is where I'm going. I am here, if I click here, see here? If I click, if I click on the first one, it says, before even it went there, it says you're going to the number one. Okay, so then the active one is the number one. If I click here, it will say, oh, you go to the number three. Okay, thank you very much. And it goes to the number three, okay? This is on panel switch. The panel itself is telling me, is, is declaring, is setting the variable, not the button. It's not when I click here, the script here is not telling me where I'm going. It's the panel itself that tells you where is going, where the panel is going, not a button that says, by the way, I ask the panel to go there, and by the way, this is the panel I'm going there. It's not the, it's not, we, you need to use the trigger. Why? Is because I want to use this, uh, I want to use the get, get trigger target panel and the trigger target panel will be uh, evaluated only during a trigger event okay which is not a clicking of a button it's this is a trigger event those all of those are so all of those has the potential to to evaluate the get trigger target panel so I need to be on the trigger in order to get the get trigger target panel to be evaluated, okay? Makes sense. Uh, that's why they call that trigger target panel. So, and so that's why I'm, use, I'm telling, so pretty much what happened here. This button here, we just say, this button do one thing, one thing, go to object, slide one. That all what this do, this button here is saying go to object slide two. And you guessed it? This button here, it's just a mere button that say go to object slide three. Okay? So, this is it. So, uh, slide one, okay. Slide two, slide three. I have, see, I have those flag, slide, slide one, two, and three. So now, what happened here? When I click a button, 
the button go to the object, the the action of going to the object triggers the on panel switch and the on panel switch trigger set the variable to say I'm going there. It is not, I repeat, it is not the button that decides this. It is the button that said go there and the fact to go there the, pa the, the slide here will trigger the number. So now see, I'm doing is working, but it's working. See, panel one, panel two, panel three. But that's a problem here. That's a problem here. If I refresh, if I refresh the 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 the, the, the window, it go the the the, the panel three. Uh, th this panel will go away. I mean, this panel here, uh, you know, is not connected. It's slide one that is active. Okay, so that means. Uh, see if I go, let's say I click here, and I go, I come back. It's panel one. See, it go back to panel one, and this one's still panel two. Is still so? Is is completely disconnected? Let's say, for example, if I open this, I show the navigation, and I move those. Nothing move up, you know. Nothing moves. There's no connection. There's one connection. Uh, it's there's a descendant connection that's a downwards connection but not upward. That means yes, it navigates, right? But it doesn't have the correct return. I don't know which one is active or not. So this is where so how we know which button is active. Okay. Those buttons here, okay. This uh sorry, this here specify Okay, works on button names. Okay, so now you need to understand the difference between the title of, this, of the button, that means that the title. This is the title of the button. This is what shows on the button. Now, you have the button name is something, is what you put here. Is You can name an object in the layout. And this one is button one. It's button one. So yeah, it still shows slide one here, but I renamed the object in my layouts is button one. Why? Is because this function here, the specify, you need to return the name of the button that you want to be active. Demonstration. Let's say I want the but I want uh, here in specify. I want the button number two to be active. Sorry. I want the button number two to be active. So now here you see it shows nothing because I didn't name my button. Now let's say I want to name that button button number two. You know, I'm naming this and look what happened. Now this name here and the name I put here, right? The button two, they matches in the calculation and here. So now bah -bah, by magic, this one is active. Let's say now I rename this button here and I say button three, okay? So, and I want this button, see this one was active, the number two was active, now I want the number three active. So what I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I'm saying button number three. Ta -da! Now this one is active. So now, I, I think some of you now start to understand what's going on here how I can get the name of the button active to be dynamically changing. Here how I'm doing this. Look this, look this here. Three, two, one. Why is because there was a name. The, the, the trigger is changing this variable. So now look what I'm doing here. Okay, so this variable name here, this is what returned the number one, two, three. So here, all my buttons are named button one, two, three, button one, button two, button three. Since this is a calculation, I do this. This will be button underscore, 
and this will be one, two, three. Look this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now it is connected together. Now, even even better than this, the good the good thing out of this is this. Even though I change with another button here, if it follows, it should. Have, oh, okay. Hold on. I did a name. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, I need to name the object because also when you rename object, when you refresh object, you refresh object by name. So I need to name this object correctly. I need to name this object in order in order to be um, in order to be refreshed. So now, bam, 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 bam. So you have a physical connection between those three, those two here. So now is descendant connection and ascendant connection. Okay. So do we have any questions so far? Well, there was a couple questions. Um, the uh, you'd have to look, go ahead and take a look at uh, Twitch. Uh, correction, Discord. Look at Discord. Yeah. Agent oh, uh, oh. Chevy. I wanted to make sure that there. Uh, Can you read it for me because I quit Discord. It was getting crazy. Yeah, it's a little nuts. Um, you have to turn the sound off so it doesn't ding you in your head. Um, yeah, basically they're talking about using a icon indicator. Um, if you have a master detail portal, you have this like little arrow that shows you frequently. You can hi highlight a master portal detail portal right yeah uh, but you have a little arrow indented arrow on the side that shows you uh, that you're uh, you want to know how i'm doing this yeah i think it's that kind of like but the, instead of using a master detail portal you're using, yeah i know i know what they're talking about yeah it's the and so uh bob I know had, what the, had the same question i think yeah so no problem i can show that it's very actually i'm using i'm using 100 percent farmaker for that uh there's no tricks and no magic Okay. I mean, yeah, that's magic, but it's my magic. So, so let's say I have an object like this. I don't want this, and um, so I have, I have this kind of object. I'm designing pretty much most of the time object like this, and I'm doing this, and um, so. Well they're, well, they're trying to apply that indicator to your button bar, your vertical yeah. button bar, right? That idea. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, but no, no, it's not on the button. Oh yeah, you can do that on the button bar as well. But our, um, it's, it's the, uh, uh, just to draw here. It's a little arrow, like if you were on this yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so they're saying, well, we can do it on the master detail portal, but can if we do our own button bar where you do? Yeah, your... you can. It's a little bit, so uh, it's a little bit hacky, but you can. So let me let me grab an object that I already built uh, instead of uh, wasting time to. No, I'm not going to distribute. Actually, I can. Uh, I can use the uh, the launch pad, which is. Uh, uh, which is uh, um, FM Launchpad. Yeah, you got to Once you have that question, then there's a couple more behind it. So you got a couple yeah, no questions. Problem. So yeah, yeah, we can do it. So uh, admin, admin. So this is uh, f uh, distributed for free. So what you want, you want this, right? Yes, but they were asking about it on a button, vertical button bar. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Oh, you already have yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's, uh, it's. Uh, I can. I, I'm going to show you one that I already built. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is a button bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a button bar. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, and you can see here, I'm playing with the active state. This is the active state, and the, so I have an icon inside here. See, the mm -hmm. icon is inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this object, if I double click on the object here, uh, hold on. If I double this, let me lock this. If I double click on the object, but if I double, yeah, it's, ah, if I double click on the object here, you can see I have one icon here. I'm using Pharmaco icon out of the box icon yep. here. I'm using an icon here and I'm, I'm playing with the size of the icon, right? So you can have a smaller and bigger, you know, so. Uh, so that have the icon, and this playing with the playing with the style, I say okay, active. I want the icon. Um, oh, okay, hold on. Uh, okay, active. I want the icon icon to be white. Inactive. I want the icon to be transparent. So when it's inactive, you don't see the icon. When it's active, you see the icon. Okay. So now. That, that, the, that's an easy catch. one, yeah. 
kill the catch. You cannot put this icon uh -huh. on the very edge of it. It will never, it will, it will, it will never work well. Okay, so we say zero. It will never be on the edge, completely on the edge. You will all, always have kind of a gap here. Okay. Okay. So here's the trick. I have a slide control, but on, on the back of this, this is a slide control here yeah. with one panel. Ah. Okay. So and it is useful in my design for many reasons, but I have a I have, okay. I'm using slide. Uh, control most of the time because they are great controls. Uh, it's a great control. For example, you can have a, a unique panel slide control. Okay, that's a good trick, by the way. Uh, let's say uh, you have inside this, you have a lot of things. Uh, let's say inside this, you have a lot of fields. For example, uh, okay, hold on. Let let put that on the. You know, side Nick, here. this is actually almost a separate topic. This one, right? Yeah, no, but, yeah, but I can, I can. So you have, you see, you have this, for example, you have those objects. In, mm -hmm. They are inside the slide control, right? So now I'm, I'm, I'm taking the slide. When I take the slide, I'm taking all of those objects, right? And let's say I want to, I want to hide all of those objects. Okay, I'm sliding, I'm hiding the slide control, and voila, all the objects are, are hidden. So you you hide one object and then you hide all of all the others. So that that's the trick that I'm using. It's very cool actually. Uh, so yeah. So this is yeah. off topic. So now let's go back here. There's, there's... So what I'm doing here. So that what I'm doing here. You can see. So I'm 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 changing. Uh, uh, pro, um, what's the name? Um, temporarily, I'm changing the color of the active, of the inactive, and see this here. This slide control, this this object here is inside the slide control. The particularity of the slide control is this, is that I can slide an object outside, but is still inside. I, I redo. So that's how you trim the edge to get rid of the uh, trim. Yeah, it's so like... you trim the edge is there. So now I remove the, 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 the color of the icon of inactive. I don't want the icon to be uh to be that red by the way uh bar you know inactive i don't want red i want transparent and now i have back my my stuff okay Very, so you so, so you use a slide control and the behavior of, of a slide panel to yeah. trim the edge because normally you can't trim the edge very well yeah okay and you can do the same the same way vertically okay so let me show you uh if you if you want if you want that to be vertical uh, you can use the same trick here, but this is cool. I, I, I love this trick. It, it, uh, it's, uh, it shows the thing much better. So let's say I have this uh, here, I have this here, and I wonder, actually I have one already built. Um, which one is, is, is a, I want to, we see it, it, gave, it gives you another visual Another great visual, by the way. So here I have a visual treatment that is cool. Uh, see, I have multiple, I have, an, I have multiple uh, tabs control like this, and one has a carrot down like this. I'm using the same trick. That means the thing is outside, but it's not outside. The thing is still inside being outside. This is a slide control. Here we have a slide control. Those are slide control, and inside the slide control, I have another one. Okay, so it looks great because you have a great visual of what's going on here. Okay, it's uh, it gives you another an additional dimension here, right? Uh, and it looks great on the on on the web, by the way. Yeah, so go ahead, go ahead with the questions. I would po you need to probably pop up the uh, pop up the uh, Discord there because it's kind of a conversation that popped forward. Okay, yeah. um, okay let me, let me they were uh, talking about there was a question about if you get rid of a button, you want the buttons to say the same dimension, uh, but buttons tend to expand and take the space. Yeah, they expand. Then you can you can do. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, if you hide this, um, so I have a you know um, I I know what you mean when you when you hide the button, mm -hmm. right? Is doing this so is so now is because you try to hide the button. Now let me show you how you can how you can use this and, and this is so powerful. 
so let me show you. Let me hide this pane here. I don't need it. Let's say you want to hide this, but you don't want that to be, uh, you know, uh, you don't want the thing to change. So you have two versions of the same button. Okay. So you have one button here, and you have this button here. Okay. So is that exactly the same? Uh, <laughs> the oh, hey, that's a that's okay. I can't I can't say <laughs> hack, but that's a <laughs> hack. Okay. Big no, it's that's that's no, a not. felony hack. I can hear the police sirens coming for that. Okay, I, I tell you, it's not. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, maybe ninety nine percent of iOS, ninety nine percent of Xcode uh, <laughs> application are hacks. No, it's not a hack. So you have a, uh, you have two versions of the button. You show one or the other at all times. So for every button you set up, you'd have an on and an off, right? Yeah, one is one is inactive and the other one is active. Yeah. One is uh, disabled and one is not. I'll be honest. I've never seen that hack, but that's a clever one. So that solves your problem. So everyone who wants that, there's a conversation going, Scott, and uh, well, there's more than one Scott, but yeah, Scott votes. Actually, I can uh, talking about Scott. I I'm using that on Scott. I can show you. Uh, I can show you that I'm actually, you know, when you know, most of the time I, I want to answer this, you know, we, yeah, we cannot have this file, uh, but I want to show you that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. That means I'm using what I'm saying, I'm not just showing doing a show here and I'm not applying nothing about what I'm saying. And I want to demonstrate what I'm saying is not only applicable but save my butt, save my butt many, many times, you know. So uh, that's why I'm showing that real world application of what I'm saying, which other maybe other people are just showing things looks great, and when you try to ap to apply it, you see that it doesn't work. So um, I don't remember where it is exactly. Uh, I think it's there. Um, I think it's there. Yeah. So here, see, I have two buttons here. They look the same. Okay. Okay. But this is so this here you cannot go to assessments. But uh, when it's not started, I need, I need one that is not started. Maybe I can just create a new one. Up, oh, not started. And when I click, I don't go. Mm. Here I go, assessment. Okay, and I, here I'm telling you. And, I, and, and the, I have well, to admit, I've never seen this. So I just learned something new. So obviously, I've never seen it. So And it doesn't bounce. It doesn't uh, move the size. Yep. Okay, yep. so yep. actually you can even actually you can even do something like this. You know, when it's not started, when it's not started like this, you can do something like this. Look, uh, you go there, and you put like a this this kind of icon or whatever. You know, um, so you put this you put this icon here. That means it's not started. That means you can go there. It's uh, you know um, you know that's it. I've yep. not started. That's it. So that's pretty so good. you give you give an information to your customer. Say hey. Not started. You can go there. Yeah. Or you can go there, but here you can go. Yeah. Right. I like it. So That's it's good, kind of, Nick. Kind That's of cool. good. And it's not actually, uh, you know, most of the time, you know, like like the double click, for example, or like a, everything that I'm showing here, and everything that I'm 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 using, I'm showing how to use the button bars and the slide control and stuff like that. Do you really think? Just just a question. Do you really think when you when you when you code? Because I'm doing a little bit of of Xcode coding. Do you think when you use Xcode is everything out of the box? You text the object, you drag it, and you connect it. Everything, and you, everything should be perfect. It should be wonderful. It should be yeah. all unicorns, you, think, unicorns think, and rainbows. Yeah. yeah. Do you think you, it's like this? No. You need to to code everything. And you know, um, you know, when I was starting to use overlapping object and stuff like that, you have thousands of objects overlapping on the on the iOS application. It's uh, on Xcode application. It's uh, it's a nightmare, and they have a kind of a uh, management of uh, of objects and stuff like that in Xcode, where you have a very specific tools to use that. Because I, here I'm demonstrating nothing else than what you have to do on Xcode. You know, it's, uh, it's the same. Xcode is doing the same thing. When you have a button that shows and doesn't show, you have exactly the same thing. You have a button activated and a button deactivated, overlapping and showing and hiding. This is it. Yep. So any other questions here? Uh, I think we got it covered, Bilbo. I think we did that. He did it both in browse and not browse mode. I mean, it's you, and when you're in layout mode, you see both buttons. When you're in browse mode, you only yeah, see one button. Exactly. But. And I, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, talking about this, I have a very cool thing. This, for example, see this. Mm. How it looks. See how it looks. It looks slick and beautiful. 
you are, uh, you know, you are, what's the name? Uh, uh, reversing the salt order, okay? Makes sense, okay. So how I'm doing this, there's two icons here. That's the button bar with two objects. So first object is this, there's two objects. First object is this icon here, and the other object is the other icon. And both objects, they show and disappear. See, I can zoom in. Both objects here, they will show and disappear. So uh, oh, since, wow. they, since they disappear, the size will be this one always because they're only one showing at a time. So here I'm saying the dimension the salt is not you see there's one on salt dimension here and here I'm saying not is empty there's no dimension there's no direction so yeah. when I click here you know when I click on this object here is doing this so uh, show hide show hide show hide show hide but it's showing one so it's very easy if you do that with an icon you need to have a, uh, a refresh when with the with the with the with the button bar, you don't need to refresh to do that. And on the side here, you have the menu. So you see, you have you reverse the order, and here you select which which how you want to sort it. So this look like a real native object. Again, I build my own feature with the building block of FireMaker, and it do it doesn't look like it doesn't look hacky. It doesn't look cranky. It looks beautiful and it works very well. All right. Well, we're pretty much out of time at this point. Uh, we're sorry for the rough launch today, everyone. We do appreciate it. We're gonna. By get the way, before before we go, before, uh, FN Launchpad, mm -hmm. you have those slide control and uh, thing. You have everything there. So just uh, just open this file. Uh, you know, you have all the. Sorry for that. You have all the slide here. You have slide here. You have slide all over the place. Uh, so go there and see how, and you have this also button bar with the with this sign here, and you have the same here on the on the on the portal here. So you can see how I build this is there in the launch pad for free. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what link we use to do that. Is that if they go to the Lean Design, then they download it from there. That's yeah, yeah. So they, you go to the Lean Design page and you download the sample file. Right. We call that we call that sample file on the Lean Design page. All right, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to fmtrain.tv. I'm going to go to individual courses. I'm going to come down here to Lean Design. And then if you download the, go through that download right here, you'll get it. So that is your link on how to get the uh, FM Launchpad if you want that. It's a very popular uh, solution for people to play with. It has some really interesting capabilities. So it's really great, awesome. I appreciate everyone being here. All right, cool, everyone. I appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. Collected the quarterback, great read, good patience, more importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Try to rally down 10, 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot to step, stands in, throws it left for Amendola, reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Ball slightly behind him, but Danny makes the grab.